So this is the latest Xiaomi 12 series smartphone, the Xiaomi 12. They have launched three smartphones, 12X, 12 and the 12 Pro. And today we are going to just take a look on the first impression like after 24 hour, what's my thought on the Xiaomi 12. And stay tuned, we are going to see the Xiaomi 12 Pro and the 12X very soon. Currently they are under shipment, all right. And uh, if you just want to feel this phone, how does it looks like? You just have to go and try using Samsung Galaxy S8. It is nearly exactly the same, like the same kind of form factor, small, cute, curved display, curved back panel, and those cool things that you get on the Galaxy S8. This is something similar to that. So on the design side, like we have used this kind of design, but again, it's a refreshing because after so long time, companies are again bringing a smaller form factor phone. You see, if you just try to use the big Galaxy phone, how does it feel like? It's very comfortable, very useful. And about the back panel, this is not the plastic, this is not the glass. Actually, there is inside plastic. And on top of that, there is a vegan leather. The same design we have already seen in the past on the Realme GT series like GT Master and the GT Sita. Maybe you were thinking like the vegan leather may come out from the edges, but on my regular usage, I haven't found any problem. On the right hand side, you will get the volume button and the power button and they are very convenient easy to reach on the top you get a speaker and as you can see the speaker design is slightly different in the bottom again you can see the similar design of the speaker there is a usb type c port there's a dual 5g sync card obviously there is no sd card and on the left side it's completely clear on the biometric you get a in display finger sensor which is very fast and very very convenient to hold because since it's a small phone you can easily reach to that you don't need to stretch your fingers getting inside the display is uh, i think it's good but not very exciting display it is 6.28 inches OLED display but the best part is it, it has a 1 billion color it has a 120 hertz refresh rate w vision hdr 10 plus and it has a peak brightness of 1000 nits there are two points i want to say about the display first it is curved so you know the drawbacks of the curved why company moved to the flat display actually three points first point is about the curved display if you want to use the curved display here it is but i think the flat display is more convenient nowadays if you're using iphone you're using other phones you can know that the brightness is not you know very high it's just 1100 nits the same brightness level you will get on the even better on the budget redmi phone for example redmi note 10s it has the same 1100 nits of brightness there has to be at least 1300 if you go with the pro one i believe you get the 1500 it has to be at least 1300 it's not a bad one you can easily view all the content now set but i was just hoping it you know to have better because it's a premium series phone i was expecting something more also on the display side if you get inside and you can see the refresh rate uh, this time you get the automatic but you have just 260 120 there is no adaptive and uh, the 12 pro has a lthpo display which can give you much higher refresh rate, much better saving battery and all the thing. Here is just a standard. Okay, display is good. It's not the very best in class. You get the similar display of the phones, but yeah, it has a curved display. So maybe you like this one. And about the ROM, it is running the MIUI ROM, obviously. But the good part is that this one is running the latest MIUI 13, which is currently based on the Android 12. So that's a good part. Recently, company launched the Xiaomi 11i, which is based on the Android 11, but this one is running the Android 12. That's the best part. I mean, it is the same stuff that you have seen earlier. There's nothing too much change. It has some different layout, not completely Android 12, but you get on the Motorola and the Pixel because that's why it is a custom ROM. It's fast. So apart the ROM, I mean, this is the fastest Android processor you get right now. So there's nothing I can show you much like this is like, you know, so let's talk about the performance. As you know, this one is running the latest Snapdragon processor, the Gen 1, based on the four nanometer transistor. Like it is crazy compared to the 7.6, it is just four, very, very fast. And here's the quick benchmark comparison. This is the Mi 11X running the 870. And these two devices are running the Snapdragon 888, OnePlus 9RT, and this is the GT. Now this is the latest, the one we are talking about. As you can see, in between these two, there is not too much huge difference, but yeah, compared to 870, there is a difference. So as of now, you can assume like either it could be the fastest Android processor 
or it could be amongst the fastest. We have to wait for the comparison between Diamond Street and the Samsung Exynos part. So far you can assume this is the fastest one because Snapdragons are mostly better than other ones. Okay. Now if I just show you the benchmarking score of the iPhone 13 with the Bionic processor, you can see where does it stand. Obviously Bionic is the fastest chip right now. If you want to use the fastest smartphone, this is just 13, you need to go to the 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, you will get slightly better performance there. So this is the Geek benchmark and again you can see the latest Gen 1 has the fastest score you get right now. So in the numbers, you won't see the huge difference but once I was using it like for example, I am taking photograph, photos are instantly clicking, I mean there is no much delay at all, it takes faster photographs. Focusing is very quick even though that depends a bit on the camera sensor also but the processor is good then again it will take a lot better photographs, a lot faster photographs. It's much quicker. So you don't need to worry about the performance. You get the all the latest thing that you want. All right. So let's talk about the photographs. How are the photos coming? So a couple of samples you can see. First about the color reproduction. It has the Sony IMX 766 camera sensor. It is 50 megapixel. And the same sensor is already been used on the OnePlus 9RT. And uh, I'm using 9RT from around a month. So my experience with the Sony sensor with this particular 766 is very good actually, you know. It takes very close to the natural shot, like just around, you can say 95% accuracy is there when you try to take photographs with that. This is my experience with the 766 running on the OnePlus 9RT. If we talk about the this phone particularly, how is the experience overall? I would say it's a very accurate but not accurate as the OnePlus 9RT. It's slightly oversaturated. But still, you will love those photographs. Details are good, like it is crispier. You can see a lot details inside. It's faster, it's good. Photographs are very good with this camera sensor. And about the macro, you can get the 5 megapixel macro camera sensor here. It's both telephoto and macro combined. So results are good, like 5 megapixel takes decent macro. If you take photographs in a bit of low light condition, like indoor environment, how are the photos coming, you can see. We have the same issue like we have seen on the past also. Maybe this could be some Xiaomi issues because it takes some different colors many times. Like for example, the brown color on the background, this is actually very close to that. When I try to adjust it, then it took the color photographs. Otherwise, you can see it's a bit of completely different. Okay, with some lighting condition, it has better. It has a very less lens flare. It is good. And details are coming very good. You can see colors are good. Details are very good with this camera sensor. You can get a lot of good details. So I am impressed with the first main camera sensor. Okay, let's go outside and see how are the photographs coming. Here again, you can see HDR photographs are good. Colors are very good. Little bit of vibrant, but yeah, it's good. You can do two times zoom. And here is an ultra wide. Ultra wide lens is not very impressive. The dynamic range is good, but details are missing. If you just try to do a bit of zoom, you can see the it's not very sharp. It's very dull. So that's why I told you like they need to have a better ultra wide. That's why if you go to the Pro, you get the 50 megapixel ultra wide. It's much better, and you can do up to 50. Uh, I believe 10x zoom. But here again, you can see quality is not very good. If you just try to do maximum zoom, this is the I believe 2x. Yep. It's good. So ultra wide is not very impressive, just okay. Like if you're just trying to take casual photographs, it will produce good colors, but don't expect a lot good output with the ultra wide. And let's take some 50 megapixel shots. How are the color? It's good, colors is good, and there's a lot of good details on the 50 megapixel. So we need to wait for the comparison with the OnePlus 9RT, then actually you can figure out like how the sensor is working. So you can see you can do a lot of zoom in and find a lot of details. Sometimes like it's not very accurate as you can see, but yeah, in many of the situations it is good. It takes good decent 50 megapixel shot. Selfies are good, colors are a bit of oversaturated, but they look nice. You have to turn off the beautification, by default it's again turned on. On the video capabilities from the rear side, you can produce up to 8K 24 per second videos and it's very high frame rate. I won't be able to show you because my premiere Pro just does the 4k 60 frame per second output because of the hardware requirement but you can make 4k 60 frame per second video that will be again uh, ois and i heard that company said like the ois is very good here so results are good and uh, videos are very very stable there is still a 
stabilized mode but that will just produce 1080p but if you just want to use a code stabilization 4k 16 4k 30 will get your job done and also there is a macro mode available if you want to film some macro videos you can film it so but here again there is some focusing issues like i told you earlier there's a bit of focusing issues on the macro lens on the video is clearly visible you can see but yeah you get some good details with the macro video also let's test out this speaker how are the speakers this is the Poco F3 GT. This is the timer. Let's start. And this is the Poco F3 GT in the water. Sound quality is, I would say it's good, it's appreciable. On the full volume, uh, you can see a bit of muffling on the speaker or you can see 5% deformation. Not too much, but quality is good. You can hear a lot of details like everything is good and about the loudness they are loud and also the output from the both the speakers are nearly equal like generally you see like it is 70 30 or 20 80 but they are i guess very much equal i believe 60 40 could be 50 50 and at the last about the battery backup and things like this is just first impression i'm not able to test it but i'm using it from the uh yesterday you can see the battery is very good you get the 4500 milliamps battery with this phone and uh, yeah it's uh, so far going good in the box you get the 67 watt charger with my experience of the 67 67 watt xiaomi charger like whatever they say it's not very accurate up to my for example when i tested the xiaomi 11i the company said like it will charge in 49 to 45 to 49 minutes in my case it took around 56 to 57 minutes but here company is uh, claiming like you it will take around 39 to 40 minutes to completely charge your phone but i think it's gonna take around 45 minutes and also it gives you a 50 watt wireless charging support provided you need an extra charger also there is a reverse wireless charging of the 10 watt in case you need to charge your phone or any other device so in the conclusion my experience with xiaomi 12 is very good i mean so far it is good there's a bit of compromise when compared to the pro one because obviously there has to be some compromise but good part is that they gave you the same processor there is no compromise like it's the latest gen 1 processor usually in the regular one you won't get that thing but here you get the good processor overall it's a good phone let me know your thought what do you think about this xiaomi 12 thank you so much guys this is Saro. have a great day